Hello everyone. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, for this video, sorry for the you know the sunlight in my eyes. I'm squinting all that stuff. I'm trying to pay too much attention to that. But um, for this video, I wanted to get into biblical prophecy. Just a, just a small little portion of that. And this is about things that are going on in the world today. And that's what strikes me. You know, it, it fascinates me about this book that no other book does, like, you know, the Koran or, you know, Buddhist teachings or Confucian, you know, they don't have the prophecy that this book has. And, you know, it predicts things that are going on right now to the T. And, you know, it's, it's very just amazing. It shows the supernatural nature of this book that it wasn't written by, you know, men. It was written by God-inspired men. Because there's no way they could have written things that are being predicted now, you know, two th you know, a thousand years ago. But anyway... These things focus more on money and, you know, financial things that are showing that we are close to the tribulation period. Now, I want to get this out of the way first. Based on scripture, you know, I, yeah, I believe that Christ is going to come back before the tribulation period takes place. Now, you have a lot of people that will say that Christ is going to come back, you know, after or during and, and things like that. But based on scripture... You know, he's, he's going to come before the tribulation period. And I don't want to get into the tribulation period today on this video because that'll tell you, uh, I don't want to make the videos too long because I don't want y'all falling asleep. But, you know, the tribulation period is a time of great suffering. And Christ describes it as it'll be suffering that the world has never seen before. In any time. So, I don't believe, you know, based on scripture like uh, in Thessalonians it talks about how we're not appointed to wrath. And we are saved by Christ. You know, I based on scripture like that. And then I have here Revelation chapter three, verse ten. This is Christ, you know, talking to the church in Philadelphia. He says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, tribulation period, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And that's and that's Christ himself saying that he's gonna keep Christians, those who have followed him and believe in him with all their heart. Out of the tribulation period. Now, as I said before, this tribulation period is going to be a time of great suffering. It's when you know the Antichrist and Satan and the beast and the false prophet are really going to are be going to control the earth, and this, the world is going to be in chaos. You know, just it's going to be death and destruction and things that we had the world hasn't seen before. So, and there are some specific you know things that are going to be going on that because the tribulation period is going to be, you know, doing having these specific things going on. We can see these things going on in our world today that are going to be leading up to that time because that time is just not going to come out of thin air. You know, there's going to be a process leading up to that time. Even though Christ said he's going to come as a thief in the night, we don't know the day nor the hour, but we can see things leading up to that time. We still don't know when exactly he's going to come, but we can, you know, guesstimate and say he's going to come soon based on what's going on in the world today. And to start us off, I'm going to turn to Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 17. Like I do in all the other videos, I'm going to put these scriptures in the, descri in the uh, description section so you can go back and read them for yourself. And starting from that scripture, and it says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he had that mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man, and his number is 603 score 6. Now, that's talking about, you know, the 666, the mark of the beast. You know, that number that everybody gets really funny about. We don't have to worry about that number now, but during that time, that mark and that number is going to be used to buy things. Now, this is talking about, it says Satan, or he, the Antichrist, is going to cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads. So what, what it's talking about is, during this time, the Antichrist is going to be the ruler of the world, pretty much. Well, he is going to be the ruler of the world, not pretty much. And during that time, he's going to make everybody be subject to his global united economy. And 
you know, a lot of people are saying, well, how is he going to be able to control a global economy with, you know, billions of people on the earth? And I got an easy answer for you on that one. I want you to open up your wallet and look how much cash you have in your wallet. And I'm not trying to, you know, say that you don't have any money or anything like that, because I'm not a rich man myself. But anyway, what I want you to see is you probably don't have a lot of cash, you know, 20s, 10s, 5s in your wallet. Most of your money, most likely, is on in a bank account, and you use that money by via debit card or credit card. And this is how Satan, the Antichrist, is going to be able to control the entire world, you know, with this cashless society. Because in a centralized government, the global economy, he can monitor everything that's going on and all these different things if everything is in a centralized, you know, system without cash, because you can't control cash. You can't see how people are spending cash, but you can track a credit card. You can track a, you can track a debit card. And these small little things like this are how we, you can see how we're moving to, you know, something that could be controlled by a global ruler if he, if he so, you know, had the power to do so. Now, we get to the mark of the beast. And, you know, people for centuries have been trying to figure out what this thing is going to be. You know, how he's going to, what is it going to be, a tattoo or a wristband he's going to put on people. But more and more, I saw something about this yesterday. I'm starting to, and a lot of, you know, people that study the word are starting to believe that it's going to be with these microchips that they're talking about implanting in people, in their hands. Now, you can Google this, you know, you can call me crazy, but Google this for yourself and, and see what's going on in the world. And we got to open our eyes and see what's going on, because Satan is trying to, you know, he uses these things like, like, credit and debit cards it seems you know it, it is efficient it seems a lot easier it seems like you know things it'll flow a lot easier without cash but that satan is going to use this one day through the antichrist to basically control the world and to get back to the the microchip thing they're going to put these chips in your hand and you know i saw yesterday it talks about you can go to the doctor's office and they'll be able to get your heart rate and you know look at all these vitals just without even having to touch you but by you just scanning your hand. And another thing is money. You won't have cash anymore. You can see we're moving away from cash now. We use it less and less and less and less. And we're gonna, they're going to come to a point where they put that chip in your hand, and that's where your funds are going to be. That's where all that you do is going to be monitored. You know, you come, you swipe your hand, that's how you pay. Look at what, look, look at what the scripture says. That no man might buy or sell say if you had that mark that mark that goes in your right hand it's probably going to be the microchip and then some kind of tattoo or something on your hand so and if you don't receive that mark at that time you will be killed but anyway as moving on this is what we're moving to is you know a cast of society where everything is controlled you know virtually pretty much and that is how satan through the antichrist is going to be able to control a global united economy based on you know things like that you know we you had to really pay attention to what's going on this book is amazing it's predicting this stuff that is happening right now and this was written thousands of years ago and you know it just amazes me that that we have this that this was given to us it's just a blessing now i looked up a couple of things that uh you know some expert some visa executive said that you know cash money can be gone within the next five years. In the next five years, we could only have credit and debit cards and things of that nature. And the microchip thing I saw on the website I was looking at said we could have that by 2017. And that's three years. Not even that away. Now, you know, this, this is a very serious thing and it's, it's something that is so real and I just want to make people aware of things like this. Now, can we stop this? No, we can't. But I just want you to be aware of what's going on. And I don't want you to be blinded by, you know, people saying this is progress and this is so good, this is so great. I mean, in a way it is, but we have to pay attention to the to what Satan is trying to do, one of the things he's going to be able to use. Now, I don't want you to go around and stop using debit cards and credit cards and all those different types of things. I don't want you to do that. I just want you to be aware of what's going on.
and that all these things are not just happening out of the blue, that the, you know, the Bible predicts these things are going to happen. And they are, right before our eyes. And now, I want to move on to what I had next. And it's talking about the priority of oil and the land in the Middle East, specifically Israel. And to get us a picture of that, I want y'all to turn to Ezekiel chapter 10, chapter 38, excuse me, verses 10 through 12. And this is talking about the Gog and Magog War. And many theologians have identified, I should have wrote it down, I can't remember, but I believe it's Gog has been identified as Russia, modern day Russia as Gog, based on scripture, based on their geographic position you know, in the world. Now, I'm going to read this scripture, and it says, Thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass, at the time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil, and to take prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods, that dwell in the midst of the land. Now, what is, he, what is God trying to tell us right here through this scripture? He's saying that thou shalt think an evil thought, talking about Russia. Now you have now even going on ISIS, you know, the crisis that they're causing. And I want you, I want y'all to really watch Russia and pay attention to everything that Russia does because, you know, I, I believe that God is Russian. And this is a script, this scripture, Ezekiel 38 through, I believe, 40, is talking about a huge war that's going to be taking place. Now, I don't know, there's no way to be dogmatic about when this war will take place, but we do know that Russia will be involved and that they will be, you know, all these countries will be attacking Israel. And, you know, I can't, it, it just blows my mind, too, how Israel is always in the news and people just try to, you know, put down the word of God and all these types of things and put down these people, but they're always in the news. There's always chaos going over, on over there. And it's because, you know, things that happen in the Old Testament. You know, I can do a video on that later, too. But moving on, why will... um Russia be interested in, you know, attacking Israel. And it's because of oil. Now, they're going to come in there and take a spoil. Now, why would they want to come and attack Israel? Well, I want you to Google this too. Google shale oil in Israel. Now, shale oil is... From what I read, is it's not it's oil that can't be used yet because it hasn't fully developed into oil. But Israel has the most massive deposits of this type of oil that can't be used yet. It says that it has over 150 billion barrels of shale oil within that small little little section of, of land. 150 billion barrels of, of shale oil. Or oil that can be used later on. And these that is what the evil thought is talking about. It is talking about Russia will want that land. Will desire that land. Because when God called that land a land of milk and honey. You know, he wasn't literally talking about a land of milk and honey. He was talking about a land that would be productive. It would be fertile. It would be full of minerals. Like the Dead Sea, for example. Full of minerals. Full of things that people can use to, you know... For, for any type of mineral that you would need, it's in the Dead Sea. Israel, you know, flourishes. It grows, it's right there by the Mediterranean Sea. It's in a perfect geographic position to grow things. It, you know, it's, it's just in this perfect position. That's why it's called like a land of milk and honey. Is It's so productive and so, you know, flourishing at all times. And, and, and like I said before, it's a perfect geographic position, you know, to be used. Because right there is like you have all these roadways and crossways coming through. Israel, and that land is valuable, it's very valuable, and I just want y'all to know, pay attention to the news, don't let it scare you, please don't let it scare you, because, you know, Christ said these things must happen before he, he comes, these things have to come to pass, 
So don't be fearful. Just know that through your faith in Christ, you're, you're going to be all right. But, you know, the scripture, it just prophesizes about these things. It talks about these things. I guess, like, and you can see what's going on. All these people will surround Israel. And Israel will stand by itself. I can show you, I, could, I should have got it, but it's scripture on that, how all these nations will attack Israel. Because Israel is so profitable, because, you know, you got all the, the tensions between Palestinians and all those different groups over there. And, you know, it just amazes me how true this book is. And, you know, I can't, you know, it, it just, it blows my mind how true this book is. And I really, I truly hope y'all pay attention to this because these things are real and these things are happening. And we have to be at watch at all times because... You know, as I'll show you in the next scripture, Christ can come back at any time. We have to be watching these things and seeing what's going on, paying attention. You know, I'm just, I'm thinking about ISIS now and how all these things, you know, how that Christians are being beheaded and, you know, murdered and just brutalized just, just for being Christians. And, you know, scripture talks about that too. Like, I don't, I don't, you know, the prophecy is really what just shocks me about this great book that we have because this this was written thousands of years ago and it's predicting everything that's going on in our world today you know I, I, I it just blows my mind truly it truly does I hope it does the same for you too but I want to move on to some of the attitude like human attitude that will be going on during this time and for that I want you all to turn to Luke chapter 17 verses 26 through 30 And I'll read from there. And this is Christ talking. He says, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now, what he's talking about is people's attitude during the time that all these things are going on. He's talking about how people will have a, a passive, you know, just a passive, uh, indifferent, like a like an indifferent attitude toward the teachings and the warnings that God has given us. And, you know, the scripture is so true in that regard because I see it all the time, you know, and not just with people who don't believe, but I'm talking about people who claim Christianity. Like, they, they can go to church, hear the word of God, hear that they need to be, you know, trying to follow in that path of sanctification and constantly, you know, purifying themselves because God is spirit. And we're trying to get, you know, we're not going to be perfect, but we have to be trying our best to follow in what he's telling us to do. And you can see people go to church, hear the word of God, hear all these different types of things, claim they're Christians, but can go out and look just like the world and have no problem with it at all. Can just, you know, go out there and live it up, party, do whatever they want to do, and not, you know, have any conscience about it. And then come back into church like nothing happened. You know, no shame at all. Like, I know we're not going to be perfect, but when we do things wrong, it should be some kind of, you know, where the Holy Spirit will convict you and you'll want to turn your way around. That's not because of you, it's because of who lives on the inside of you, if you're truly saved. Now, you know, like, like the scripture describes here, in the days of Noah, people were laughing and scoffing at him. People were laughing, you know, he's building his ark, doing these different types of things, you know, doing all this stuff and people were laughing at him because they couldn't see it he warned them he told them but they were laughing and scoffing at him because they couldn't see it i see the same thing going on with christianity today people laugh and scoff at christians and you know, say where is jesus you know look at all these types of things going on you know you still believe in a god you can't see all those types of things go back to noah they were doing the same things to him and, look, and what happened? The flood came. And they were all killed. All gone. 
I can see the same thing going on today. People laughing and scoffing at Christians. People, you know, taking a back seat to the word, not caring about the word. And then, and then in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, it's all going to be gone. It's all going to be over. And there will be no more second. You know, there there's not going to be another you know, chance of people who heard the gospel or had a chance to or anything like that. Now, you know, with the passive indifference, people, you can see it today, people just really don't care about the word anymore. They they can hear it, they can listen to it, it doesn't do anything for them. And that's just the attitude that Christ is talking about. He said it's just going to be just like that in the day the Son of Man will be revealed. So, just going back and look at the, looking at these things, you know, I just really want y'all to be aware. And these are just, I could go on and on and on about these types of prophecies, but I just want to do a couple, because I don't want to make, you know, super long videos or anything like that. But, you know, I just want y'all to really pay attention to the scripture. Pay attention to what's going on. And really start to study and look, because everything is written down in front of you. And all these things are going to come to pass. Now, you know, like, like I always say in every video, if you have a question, you have a comment, you want to just say something, you want to ask something, whatever, you know, ask me. You know, I'm, I'm here, and I, I want to do everything I can to help, you know, because I, I just want to, you know, do the will of the Lord. That's all I'm trying to do with these videos and everything. So if you have a question, comment, whatever, and you know, leave it. And if you want to subscribe and see more videos, do that too. Like it, whatever. Uh, I thank y'all so much for watching these videos too. It really means a lot to me. You know, it means so much. It really does. I can't thank y'all enough. For real, from the bottom of my heart. I really can't. And I just want y'all to know and study the scripture. Know what's going on. And don't let Satan blind your eyes to things that are going on right in front of our eyes. If we just open and stop looking with these, these eyeballs and look with our spiritual eyes, we'll be able to see so much more. So, I thank y'all and I uh, hope y'all have a blessed day.